Argentina. Yep, yep. Argentina, once again, is in the spotlight. Honestly, I give you my word. It's not that we here at Visual Politic have it in for this country, or even particularly mean to focus on it. But what can we say? Argentina is the country that during the first half of the 20th century was the great Latin American superpower. It just keeps on giving us bad news to talk about. For example, relatively recently, we told you here on this channel about the havoc being wrought by the world's longest quarantine. At the time of making this video, even though it was no longer quite so strict, Argentines have been in confinement or restricted activity for more than 250 days. As you can imagine, this is something that is hitting the economy hard. An economy that already had been having a lot of problems, even by Argentinian standards, since 2018. So, you could say that the coronavirus has been something like the nail in the coffin. A very hard blow that is already having many consequences. In particular, one of them is a wave of companies that are seriously considering leaving Argentina, even though this could incur great financial losses. Of course, weighing up the situation, many are thinking that staying could be much worse. But, what companies are we referring to? And why are they considering leaving Argentina? What exactly is the current situation in this troubled country? In this video, we're going to give you all the details. But before we do, I just want to remind you of our new channel, Visual Academy. Marks the end of the Holy Roman Empire. It's made from the whole team here at Visual Politic, and we cover some of the most interesting people, places, and periods in history. Do you want to know more about Genghis Khan? Of course you do. What about the ancient Greeks? Obviously, they're pretty cool and they invented democracy. And my personal favourite, you can find out all about the Vikings. It's got amazing animation, fantastic storytelling and some voiceovers that you might recognise. So check out Visual Academy here on YouTube. And now, let's get cracking. A potential power. You see, my friends, every time we talk about Argentina, it is almost impossible for us to not be surprised by its perpetual inability to escape from what we can now openly call the problem of the permanent crisis. After all, if we think about it clinically, Argentina is a country with enormous potential. A qualified population, plenty of cultural activity, a reasonably good climate, a lot of natural resources, a large territory, etc, etc. The list of positive attributes is very long. And, of course, this observation is not unique to us, nor are we the first ones to bring it to light. Way back in the 1960s, eventual Nobel Prize winner Simon Kuznets stated that there were four types of countries according to their economic performance. The developed, the underdeveloped, Argentina, and Japan. The economic evolution of the countries that were in the first two groups could be explained without many problems, but in the case of Japan and Argentina, their evolution was exactly the opposite of what could be expected. Japan for the better, and Argentina for the worse. Another Nobel Prize winner in economics, Paul Samuelson, described Argentina's situation in 1980 in this way. Listen up. If someone had asked me in 1945, what part of the world do you expect to experience the most dramatic economic takeoff in the next three decades, I would probably give a similar answer to the one below. Argentina is the wave of the future. It has a temperate climate, its population density offers a favorable endowment of natural resources per employee. By a historical accident, its current population constitutes the most homogeneous progeny of the nations of Western Europe, and the Argentina of 1945 is that intermediate state of development from which which one can easily expect rapid growth. Paul Samuelson, La Economia Mundial a Finales de Silgo Viente, Comercio Exterior, Volume 30, Number 8, Mexico, August 1980, pages 821 to 829. So I don't think we're going too far if we define Argentina as a lost opportunity. And not just once, but several times. For example, during the last 30 years, the world has experienced economic growth as never seen before. However, Argentina has been underperforming since the 1940s. Since the emergence of Juan Domingo Perón, they keep applying practically the same policies and getting the same results. This is something we have already covered in several videos here on Visual Politic. In fact, since the advent of democracy in 1983, Argentina has been ruled by Peronism for 25 of the last 37 years. And if we only focus on the province of Buenos Aires, which is the largest and most populated in the country, for 29 of those 37 years, Peronism has ruled. That is almost 80% of the time. To make matters worse. The rest of the leaders have not distanced themselves much from policies that we can almost consider typical for Argentina. They are as Argentinian as Maradona. Well, the point is that now, in 2020, two elements have come together that are capable of making even the hardiest investor nervous. The coronavirus 
and a new government. You see, my friends, on the 10th of December 2019, Alberto Fernandez took over the presidency. Although it is not clear exactly how far his power extends and how far that of his vice president, the powerful Ms. Cristina Fernandez de Kitchener, does. In any case, in all fairness, Alberto Fernandez came to the presidency of a badly damaged country under very precarious conditions. Because if the legacy that Mauricio Macri received in his day was not exactly great, the one he left behind certainly didn't have anything to envy. We have covered this topic in detail in a previous video here on Visual Politic. High unemployment, high public spending, high inflation and a considerable drop in the central bank's reserves. Practically all the indicators were very, very red. And to top it all off, two months after he came to office, the coronavirus crisis broke out, turning the global economy upside down and leaving Argentina almost like a desert. The most conservative forecasts point to a 12% fall in GDP in 2020, an unemployment rate above 22%, a poverty rate close to 45%, and inflation that could exceed the 50% barrier. In other words, we could be talking about an economic tsunami rather than a perfect storm. And remember that this is taking place in a country that has been going from bad to worse since 2012. We've already mentioned the baggage received from previous governments, but the truth is that the policies of the current government could make things even worse. Listen up. Turning their backs on the world. The current Argentinian government has a unique plan to get out of the crisis. A plan as unique as it is peculiar, insofar as it involves doing the opposite of what most countries that have gone through a crisis have done in order to get out of it. So, do you want some examples? Well, let's take a look at two of President Alberto Fernandez's policies that have the most impact on the Argentine economy. First of all, we have the exchange controls. You see, the Argentine government uses money issuance. This is particularly known as the money-making machine to finance a large part of public expenditure. This is something that the Argentine government has been doing for decades, to the point that the value of their local currency has practically disappeared. This is the cause of the enormous inflation that year after year plagues the country, and also explains why Argentines always jump at the chance to switch to the dollar. Yes, Buenos Aires is one of those places where you can get discounts if you pay in foreign currency. Well, in an effort to stop the collapse of the peso, the government applies exchange controls. This way, if you want to buy dollars in the official market at about 80 pesos per dollar, you will have to meet a series of requirements, which is usually difficult. That's why the alternative is the black market, where the dollar doesn't trade at 80 pesos, but at around 145. In addition, if you're a company that exports, the government will take away the dollars you receive and change them into pesos at the official exchange rate, about 80 pesos. But, of course, if you want to buy dollars again, for example to pay for imports, and you can't get them on the official market, you have to get them on the black market at 145 pesos each. That's a loss of almost 40%. In addition, foreign companies have a very, very difficult time getting their hands on any benefits reaped from the country. So you see that things aren't easy for Argentine exporters, or at least I personally would not like to be one of them. And then we have the labour regime, which was already costly in Argentina, but during the pandemic has even prohibited layoffs, as illustrated in this quote from Alberto Fernandez. As I said at the G20, no one is saved alone. You have to be supportive, put yourself in the other shoes and help them. Some miserable people forget those who work for them and in the crisis they fire them. To those wretches, Pope Francis spoke. Now I tell them that I will not let them do it. Alberto Fernandez on Twitter. Now this might all sound pretty good, but usually reality is a little bit different. Imagine that you have a company that, right now, because of the pandemic, has low sales or even no sales. If you can't make staffing adjustments or resort to strategies to reduce losses, even temporarily, then the whole company may end up closing down and all the workers will be out on the street. Reality is sometimes unpleasant, but if you turn your back on it, you might have a problem. In any case, Fernandez's messages don't seem to be the best for encouraging investment in the country. But that's not all. It's not just the current crisis the country is going through and the kind of policies that have been put in place so far in 2020. If we also add those that were already in place, such as Argentina being in the top three countries in the world for imposing the highest taxes on businesses, then we can already understand why many companies are starting to consider fleeing or at least stopping any investment altogether. In fact, according to a UN report, even before the coronavirus, Argentina was the second country on the list for the worst evolution of foreign direct investment so far in the 21st century. Imagine their ranking now. And take note, because it's not just about companies. According to a survey conducted by the consulting firm Taquilon Research Strategy, in association with the companies Inclusion and Gestion Alpadia, 8 out of 10 Argentinians who are able to weigh up what their situation will be like in 10 years 
would leave the country if they had the conditions to do so. The bottom line is that Argentinians with the capacity to think about the long term are thinking about leaving. On the other hand, in September, the Financial Times published a report in which it proposes the exit of a growing number of foreign companies from the country. For example, the Buenos Aires correspondent of this newspaper told how, at the same time that the Minister of Economy, Martin Guzman, was presenting the 2021 budget with relatively optimistic projections, the Chilean department store company, Falbella, announced its progressive exit from Argentina. It will start with the immediate closure of four of the 19 stores they have in the country while they look at a buyer for the rest of the operations. But having said that, I'm sure many of you are thinking, but Wait a minute, Grant. Isn't this an isolated case? Something specific? Are there really more companies who want to bail out in a market of 45 million people? Well, yeah. The truth is that there are. More and more companies are starting to propose this strategy. This is the case with airlines. For example, in June, the Chilean airline Latam confirmed its departure from the country and began to negotiate with its 1,700 employees. It had been in Argentina for 15 years, maintained flights to 12 local destinations and held a 16% market share. LATAM was followed by Air New Zealand, which has confirmed that even once normal air travel is restored, it will no longer provide connecting services between New Zealand and the land of Tango. Exactly the same news was announced by Qatar Airways. In August, Emirates announced the suspension of its operations for an indefinite period, and Norwegian Airlines has sold its domestic operations in the country. Obviously, a lot of airlines are having some trouble with the coronavirus, but it's not just the airlines and Farabella. Many other companies from very different sectors are considering following the same steps. Of course, most of them are very cautious because they obviously want to reduce the conflict and at the same time, try to sell their businesses. We see that Chilean companies are leaving because there is a clear anti-market, anti-business bias. So it is worrisome that Alberto Fernandez's administration continues in that line. Juan Sutil, president of the Confederation for Production and Consumption. Between 1990 and 2016, Chile has certainly been the second largest investor in Argentina after Brazil. In any case, some companies have already announced their intentions. That is, they are going to leave or at least reduce their presence considerably. Do you want to know which ones? Then let's start with the list. The German chemical company BASF has announced the transfer of a large part of its operations to Brazil. The same has been done by the French company San Gobain, which has moved its windshield production to Brazil and has closed its factory in the town of Campana in the province of Buenos Aires. During the month of July, the French laboratory company Pierre Fabre sold its installations and concluded its activity in the country. The same was done by the German packaging and pharmaceutical supplies company Gersheimer. And the list goes on. Brightstar, a manufacturer of cell phones for brands such as Samsung and LG that has a plant in Rio Grande with 500 employees, has finalised the sale of its production facilities in the country in exchange for the symbolic figure of $1. Let's just say that their priority was to leave at any price. For its part, a better known company, Nike, announced at the beginning of the year that it was transferring its operations in the country, along with those in Brazil, Chile and Uruguay, to the Mexican company. AXO. Then there's also the North American giant, Walmart, that has 92 establishments distributed in 21 provinces and that employs more than 10,000 people. They have also confirmed that they are seeking to leave completely. They are looking for a buyer for its Argentine activities. Everything indicates, in addition to those companies we have mentioned, companies such as Sodomac, Burger King and Starbucks would also leave Argentina if they found someone to take over their business. You see, my friends, this trend seems to be the last stage of a long process that has seen Argentina become a country allergic to foreign investment. To put this in perspective, the land of tango has gone from representing around 20% of all foreign investment coming into Latin America to less than 5%. Obviously, any foreign company leaving the country is bad news. Large international groups have a greater capacity to invest, more know-how, more modern management systems, and usually, more technology. At the same time, the great economic success stories of the world earn their success by attracting investment. And in many other places, we find new stories like this one. A Swiss canton will soon surpass Hong Kong as the best tax haven in the world for companies. Hong Kong will soon lose its status as the place with the lowest corporate tax in the world and will be replaced by the small mountainous canton of Nidwalden in Switzerland. Bloomberg. Greece to offer a 50% tax break for returning professionals and digital migrants. Reuters. The case of Argentina is unique because this country aspires to get out of its endless crisis by doing exactly the opposite. By scaring off foreign investment, imposing more taxes, more currency exchange controls, and much, much more regulation. Perhaps that is precisely why it is in an eternal crisis. What do you think? At this point, 
it's your turn to tell us. What future do you think awaits Argentina? Will it manage to overcome the current crisis? Does it really matter that all these big companies are leaving? And if you are watching us from that country, as we know many of you are, how do you rate Alberto Fernandez's management? What do you think he should change? Leave your answer in the comments below. As always, we really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. Also, don't forget to check out our friends at the Reconsider Media Podcast. They provided the vocals in this episode that were not my dulcet tones. Finally, this channel is supported by cause of Patreon and our patrons on that platform. Please consider joining them and supporting our mission of providing independent political coverage. And, as always, I'll see you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.